If you want an AI tool that is really simple and actually saves you a ton of time in the plotting, character development, world building, and even story Bible creation, then Autocrit has actually released a couple of new features that I think you should check out. They've managed to make it pretty easy and streamlined so you don't have to worry about any complicated prompting techniques or anything like that. So let's get into it. All right, so some of these features have actually been in the works for a while here at Autocrit. And Autocrit, if you are unfamiliar, is a editing tool primarily. It's a tool to really help you understand the pacing of your novel, anything that you might be overdoing, a lot of different things. I've done videos about it in the past, but more recently they've started working on adding a couple of AI features. Now keep in mind, Autocrit is not an AI writing software, but they have put in a number of almost brainstorming tools as well as story analysis tools that I actually find to be quite helpful and a big time saver. So the first one we're gonna to explore today is called Story Ideas, which is a little bit more recent. Some of these have been here for a while and I've just sort of been waiting for them to get a little bit more polished before I talk about them, but they're actually pretty good at this point. So let's first explore Story Ideas. Now, you can do this for fiction or nonfiction. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go with fiction here since I think that's what most of my audience is into. And it gives you a whole bunch of these different fields to start planning out your book. And we've got, first of all, your story premise, which is exactly what it sounds like. Then you move down to world building and it's got a couple of things here that you can outline You know what your world building is or use AI to brainstorm the world. Down below that, you see character building. So you can add more information about your protagonist and antagonist, uh, other characters here. And then you have a beat sheet. Now you can have multiple beat sheets here. The plot centered one is basically the same as what you'd see in Save the Cat. But if you want something that's a little more genre specific, they do have others for romance, mystery, horror, a short story or a character centered plot. I have found that a lot of these are all very similar to each other, but they just use different names. For instance, it's common in romance to have a beat called the meet cute. The meet cute is basically just the exact same thing as the inciting incident in any other story. It's just specific to romance. The meet cute is the inciting incident for a romance. So I'm just gonna go with plot centered for now, just to go with the standard thing. And let's go through this. So first of all, if you have no idea anything about your book, you can go ahead and just click this and it will automatically generate a story premise for you. And the story premise that it gives you is actually not too bad as far as the detail goes. So it says a young aspiring musician, Lily dreams of winning a prestigious music competition to prove her talent. However, her former mentor turned rival Gabriel stands in her way with his sabotaging tactics and jealousy. All right, so I don't particularly want to write something about this because of course I want to write about the sci-fi beach romance, which everybody wants to know more about. So I'm just gonna replace this with my own little concept and it's not nearly as long and fleshed out, but that's okay. You can always do that more later. And the concept is a science fiction beach romance book about a man who discovers mermaids actually exist on the colony planet where he lives. And once you have one thing in here, doesn't matter what it is, it will look at that one thing to help you brainstorm everything else. So now that we've established that this is a science fiction beach romance book, I can go here to world building, say, okay, for general geography, I can go ahead and click this. And it says, give me a, uh, it says a colony planet is a lush tropical paradise with vast stretches of sandy beaches and crystal clear waters. So you can tell it's pulling from my story premise when I do this. Now, if I were to get rid of the story premise, just get rid of it temporarily, and were to just say general geography, it gives me something totally random, which might be a good brainstorming tactic for you. Maybe you want to actually start with the general geography as a place to sort of inspire you for different thinking. I know plenty of authors that do this where they will start with a map. They'll like draw out a map. And by looking at the map, they get ideas for stories of like, oh, this is an interesting feature here. What could that mean for a story? And that works that way. Same goes if you want to start with a character. So if you wanted to come down here and brainstorm your protagonist, you could just go ahead here and brainstorm the protagonist here and move on from there. It'll give you a totally random character here from a random genre because we haven't established any of that yet. But I'm just going to delete that. We're going to put our premise back in 
and we can go through all of these and start brainstorming what we want. So I like that it actually starts with world building here. You don't have to go with world building as the next thing, but often starting with world building is a good thing. Even though world building is arguably the lesser important of the three pillars of story, which are setting and plot and character. Plot and character usually are slightly more important, but world building is often a good one to start with because depending on where your book is set, it's going to affect the character. It's going to affect the plot very heavily. And so having the world building sort of established first can often be a good thing. So we could just go through this and use exactly what it gives us, or more likely you want to look through what it gives you. And if you don't like it, you can always run it again and it'll give you something different. And you can also, anytime you want, just go through and edit it yourself. And I recommend doing that before moving on to the next thing, because what is written here will affect everything else that you generate. So um, we could just continue on from here. And if I wanted to say, OK, so scarcity, fresh water is scarce on the colony planet due to a prolonged drought. OK, maybe I don't really care about this. Maybe there's like some kind of gemstone or something that I would like to be more scarce or something like that. You could just modify that to your heart's content and then come over here and move on to the next thing. So now we have a fully fleshed out world building based on what the AI has given us. And the next step is character building. So we can go through, OK, OK, we want to establish who is the main protagonist, right? And it gives us a character named Alex Turner, and it gives us quite a few things that are integral building blocks of a character that you do want to have down. It's done a really good job of prompting this so that it's actually a decent result here. So we have the want to prove his worth to the native population and earn their trust by uncovering the existence of mermaids. His skill is proficient in navigating through dense jungles, knowledgeable about plant life for survival. His flaw is a fear of swimming, okay, due to a childhood trauma, struggles with water related tasks. That could be a very interesting flaw in the context of mermaids. Usually I see a flaw as more of a psychological wound that they have, but it can be something a little bit more external like this. So you would go through and fix this up to your heart's content as well. We can add an antagonist. Now, this might be a case of where the antagonist would be more less of a person and more of like societal expectations or something like that. And it doesn't do that very well. It usually gives us an actual character, but that's fine. And you can go through add all kinds of additional characters if you want. And then we get the beat sheet. I always like the beat sheets. If you saw my recent video about plot, you'll recognize a number of these beats. So let's start with the opening image. Now, knowing everything it knows about the characters and everything is going to give us something that works. It's actually given us a pretty detailed opening image here, which I like. I like it when these AI tools give us a lot of detail because from there, it's much easier for us to say, yes, that's good or no, I would rather have it be this way. So this is really a good starting point here. And as I mentioned in my plot video, I usually like to start with the opening and then the closing image first. So I would actually come down here and generate the closing image. So it already is looking at this as yes, it needs to echo the opening. The final image mirrors the opening scene with Alex standing on the same sandy beach, now confident and at a peace with himself, etc. And I like to have this because it helps the AI understand how are we gonna get to this point? So I put that in there and then we go back to the top and start generating the glimpse at the theme. Theme stated, as Alex braves the dense jungles, a local elder whispers to him about the delicate balance between progress and preservation on their sacred land, hinting at unseen forces that may test his resolve. We move on to the status quo and setup, which shows us a lot of different cool things there. And of course, you want to be editing this. This is really just meant to be a form of brainstorming to help you get thinking about the book. And some of you may be wondering, OK, what prompts is it using? Can I change these prompts if it's not the kind of thing that I'm into? And the answer is right now, no, you can't. And that is the only drawback that I see to this. However, whatever prompting methods they are using under the hood are very good. And if you really don't want to worry about prompting, you just want something simple that kind of helps you get the ideas flowing. This is going to be a really good option for you. It's very detailed. It's very thorough. And it basically covers all of the different pieces of the puzzle that you want to have in order to start your book, starting with the premise, the basics of your world building, your character and your beat sheet. So this is a really cool feature. 
to really get started on a book before you even started writing it. So I know I actually do a lot of this like early brainstorming and then putting together various documents that I might hand over to the AI or even to a ghostwriter or someone to, that's helping me to flesh things out because these days I don't have a ton of time. And so I like to do that. So this is definitely something I will be using for those initial documents and making sure that everything is exactly what I want it to look like. But that's story ideas located right here on your autocrit dashboard. You can do the same thing for nonfiction. It's very similar. You have things like your audience avatar, your author background and your outline. But we're going to go to an actual book. So if you're in the writer's desk here and you go to projects and files, you'll see any books that you're working on. And I'm just going to go to my heirs of Dracula. Now, some of you may recall, I did a video a while back about doing a story Bible with Novel Crafter. And I'll demonstrate briefly how that worked. This is Novel Crafter. I would take a chapter, full chapter, go ahead and select the entire thing. And then I have a custom prompt that I've built called Story Bible Summary. And all I have to do now is click this button to run that prompt. I'm going to do it with Claude 3 Opus. And it starts to generate a entry for a story Bible based on this particular chapter. So it gives us this first a summary of the plot real quick. It gives us a summary of every character in this chapter. So we have like Van Helsing, Quincy, Dracula, Mina Harker, Arthur Holmwood, Jonathan Harker kind of shows us where they are in this chapter. It gives us a location. So this is the, the scene that it takes place, some interesting facts about world building and some information about the timeline that this takes place in. And so it's done that all by just analyzing the chapter that I gave it. Now I'm going to discard this right now because I don't want to actually remove this chapter, but that is something that you can do. However, if you don't want to go through all of the trouble of going through that process in Novel Crafter and tweaking the prompt and figuring out which model you're using and everything, you want something that makes it a little simpler and that helps you kind of as a developmental editor of your book, then Autocrit has something for that as well. Now I've gone ahead and uploaded my entire book here into Novel Crafter. So you see I have like chapter one, and we scroll down chapter two, etc. And it's all broken up by the right chapters here. So that makes it easy. You can see the word count in here is 52,000. Now, those wondering about this book, as a side note, I am going to be rewriting it soon. So stay tuned for more videos about that. But what we want to do here is go to analysis. And under analysis, you'll see fiction analyzer or nonfiction analyzer. Obviously, if you're writing nonfiction, you'd pick the nonfiction analyzer, but this is a fiction book. So we'll go ahead and select fiction analyzer. And on the sidebar here, it will give you this analysis. If you haven't done this before, this will be completely blank. But what this does is I can basically let's just delete what I have here for chapter one. Um, and this is what it'll look like for you. It'll have a synopsis. It'll have information about the conflict, the characters, the world building, possible contradiction events, which could be useful for you. Timeline analysis, similar to what I had. Foreshadowing events. So it'll look at events that might be foreshadowing something, which could be useful if you didn't mean to foreshadow something. If you say, oh, this it looks like this sort of thing that you're setting up here is setting up something down the line and you'd be like, oh, I didn't mean to be trying to hint at something in the future there, so you could take that out. Plot thread tracking and genre analysis. So what you want to do is select this button here, generate analysis, or if you already have your full book in here, you can say analyze all chapters and it will analyze everything for you all at once. It takes a few minutes to do. Or if you've like just been adding new chapters and things, you can select only changed chapters and it will go through and analyze just the ones that you've changed. Since I have everything already for all of the other chapters, I'm just going to show you what this looks like when I say generate analysis for chapter one. All right, and it gives us a synopsis of the chapter. The chapter op opens with Mina, a noble born lady, turned vampire hunter, stalking the alleys of the London in search of a smuggler. She uses her enhanced se senses to track down her target and confront him, leading to a struggle that ends with her feeding on him before staking him. The chapter closes with Mina determined to find the rest of the smugglers before disappearing in the shadows. So that is accurate. We have a summary of the conflict between Mina and the smuggler and internal conflict within Mina regarding her vampiric nature and thirst for blood. 100% accurate for this chapter. And this is a good way of just saying, Am I accomplishing the thing that I was setting out to do with this chapter? Do I have internal conflict? Do I have normal conflict? We have characters, just mostly just Mina. We have world building details here for possible contradiction events. It says no contradictory descriptions or inconsistent events found. So that's good. 
You have the opening scene introduction. This is a timeline analysis of the different sequence of events. So that's useful. Foreshadowing events, mentions of Dracula's bite awakening abilities within Mina may foreshadow further encounters or conflicts related to this event. Yeah, that, that could maybe be the case. Plot thread tracking, chapter analysis. This chapter fits within genres such as urban fantasy or supernatural thriller due to its focus on vampires, dark themes, and action-packed uh, scenes set in an urban environment like Victorian era London. Yeah, that's kind of accurate. It's more of a gothic fantasy, but that's very similar to urban fantasy. It's just set in Victorian times. So yeah, I'd say that is accurate. So this is a really great analysis. Now, once you have all of your book analyzed in this way, you can actually move on to this tab here that says overall. And once you're in here, you'll hit this button that says start analysis. And that will generate basically everything that you see here. So this is I've already run this and it gives me a much more thorough analysis of everything as a whole. So at the chapter level, it's only looking at that chapter, which means it's not going to be able to plot everything from like the beginning chapters to the end. And it's not going to be able to look at those in a really cohesive way. But once it's generated all this, it's able to look at that in the overall section and say, OK, based on all of those chapter analysis, here are some plot threads that might be unresolved or things like that. Now, because AI is not necessarily a good developmental editor, a lot of this stuff that it gives you is not necessarily going to be accurate. However, some of it will be. And you might want to look through this as just a prompt for yourself to actually go through the book and say, yeah, I didn't really resolve this plot thread very well. I should go back and do that. Or yeah, it's a little vague about the world building here, whatever it is, this might be a good way to work with that. So for instance, we have the conflict thorough lines. The overarching conflict in this narrative is between humanity represented by Mina and her companions versus the supernatural forces of darkness, Dracula's brides, this includes sub conflicts such as the struggle within Mina between embracing or rejecting her vampire instincts. 100% accurate there. Unanswered questions or dangling plot threads include the fate of Cosmina after escaping following an attempted resurrection ritual. That actually is resolved. So that's one thing that I would say, yeah, I got that one right. So we can disregard that. How society at large will react to these events, given that characters like Sherlock Holmes are involved who have connections beyond just hunting monsters. Mm, yeah, th that might be something to consider. We have plot thread tracking. So we have Mina's predatory nature and control. Throughout the chapters, Mina struggles with her vampiric instincts versus her noble intentions. While she manages to control herself in various situations, this internal conflict remains a significant thread that is not fully resolved. I disagree. I think this is fully resolved. And it's like that's like the whole point of the book is that it gets resolved at the end. But I can understand why the AI might look at that and be like, hmm. Maybe not. Now, here's one that I might want to take a closer look at. So we have the resurrection ritual for Dracula, although it seems thwarted temporarily with Mara's defeat and Sherlock incinerating the dead undead rats controlled by Pi the Pipe Vipers flute. There's no explicit mention if all components necessary for Dracula's resurrection were destroyed or if this threat has been entirely neutralized. That's a good point. I should probably go through and maybe have them have a conversation where they say, is there any way that this resurrection ritual could happen again? And they could say yes or no or whatever the situation is. So, yeah, uh, this is a good one. And that's why I say you have to take these with a bit of a grain of salt. But it can be a good way to sort of move past your biases and say, oh, yeah, maybe I didn't really address that as well as I thought I did. So it's an excellent way to really get analysis of your book overall. Then we have a theme analysis, which I won't get into here, and the genre conformity. Overall, a genre that fits this text would be urban fantasy mixed with elements of gothic horror, mystery, historical fiction, and action adventure. It's definitely not that many things, but it, uh, yeah, it's close enough. And then the other thing that we can do in this analysis is look at characters. So I have not yet analyzed this, so, but you're not allowed to analyze this until you've already done the chapter analysis. So it can look at those chapter analysis to try and determine what it needs to do here. But we can go ahead and start the analysis. All right, and we have the protagonist analysis here. Desire Mina desires to rid herself in the world of vampiric influence, particularly that stemming from Dracula and his brides. This isn't exactly what I would say. I mean, yes, sort of the external desire, but it's not really what I would describe as her internal desire. So this is, might be a good prompt to say, hmm, maybe I didn't make it so clear about what her inner desire was, her inner want. And then it says her need. Deep down, Mina needs acceptance, both self-acceptance for her vampiric nature and acceptance by others, not despite but alongside her condition, this realization is pivotal for her transformational journey. This is spot on. So I'm actually really happy about this. 
And then the flaw, her primary flaw is an internal struggle with self-doubt fueled by guilt over actions committed while under Dracula's influence. Not quite exact because it's not while under Dracula's influence, it's just while being a vampire. This doubt occasionally hampers her decision-making abilities and clouds judgment about trusting allies or leveraging personal strengths effectively. So other than that little bit about Dracula's influence, that's pretty accurate that I would describe her internal struggle with self-doubt as the main flaw in this book. And that was intentional too. So it managed to pick up on something that I intentionally put in there. It's not just making something up just out of the blue. So that's good to know. All right, the next bit is the protagonist arc. Mina exhibits a transformational character arc evolving significantly throughout the story. Initially struggling with guilt and denial over being turned into a vampire by Dracula, she gradually learns to harness her new powers responsibly. The turning point occurs in chapter 25 when she decides to establish an institute dedicated to combating supernatural threats. Yep, that's about right. Now, this is a little bit vague, and this is actually one of the reasons why I will be rewriting this book. It's because I don't feel like I had a good, solid arc for this character. And I'm one of those people that does not rewrite books, but because I wrote this with AI and I'm gonna write it again with AI and the technology has improved, I feel like I can do it without too much headache. And so that's why I'm planning on doing it, but I really wanna get this book right. So I am gonna be rewriting at least large portions of the book and expanding it significantly. So protagonist inconsistencies, this could be a useful one to look at. Instances where Mina acts inconsistently are notably few, but include moments where she hesitates unnecessarily due to self-doubt or guilt. For example, debating whether or not to feed on humans even when no other options seem viable. Like chapter 28, these instances sometimes conflict with earlier displays of determination against vampires' influence. Nah, I'd say that's not quite right but again sometimes this is just to prompt you to say maybe this is something to look at and then we have character archetypes cosmina embodies this role as the antagonist a striver for power yeah sure a relationship character sherlock holmes serves as this figure his logical perspective helps guide mina toward understanding what must be done if the relationship character means more of like a mentor character then yes uh, sherlock holmes does fill that role we have the distraction character mara that represents temptation toward darker paths due to vengeance motives okay Support character Van Helsing provides knowledge about finding supernatural entities. Yep, that's good. Opposition characters smugglers represent societal evil, evils unrelated directly, but still challenging moral integrity. Sure. And then emotional reason, reason characters. These roles fluctuate among characters like Watson reason showing concern for strategy versus emotional impulses driving decisions during confrontations. OK, and then it gives us more character analyses to, to go through. And yeah, that's that's all good. So. Overall, I think this is a really good analysis of the whole thing. And even if you don't use these analysis tools, just having everything that you see here in the chapter analysis can be really good for helping you create that story Bible. So what I would do is I'd copy these to a clipboard and basically save them in a separate document, just like I would do here in Novel Crafter to do that, the same thing with that prompt. And then once you have all of those chapter analyses in one place, you can ask AI to create like a Wikipedia entry for the character of Mina, for example, or for an object inside of the story. Whatever the case is, you can do that after you've gone through this analysis and you've broken down each of the component parts it can be really good for helping you create that story bible so that's one of those things that i really like this for and i will probably be using autocrit for that rather than my own prompts just because it's easier and it's thorough and i don't really need to enhance or adjust the prompt because it does what I need it to do. Now, if that's for you and you want to check this out, these features are available at no additional cost if you already have an Autocrit. Autocrit typically costs about $30 a month, which I know is a lot for a lot of people, which is why I recommend getting the lifetime option. I have a special deal for the lifetime option, which is a really good deal, which you can get down below. They don't usually offer the lifetime just like publicly on their platform. So getting it through a link like I have below is the really the only way to do it. So if you're interested in understanding more about Autocrit and getting that link and supporting this channel as well, Definitely go check out that link below to learn more about Autocrit and to pick it up at the lifetime price. I use Autocrit for basically everything in the editing process to help me really make sure my language is on point and everything like that. 
I also love to use Autocrit as a way of making sure that the language that the AI gives me is not too much. AI does this quite a bit where it gives you very, what I just call chat GPT isms, things that it's just overusing or are too flowery in nature. And Autocrit is really good at picking those up and pointing them out to you so you can go through and manually edit it yourself. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I have a whole video that I did about Autocrit on just that topic. So you can check that out and I will see you in the next video.